Today's video is going to be a will I buy it? So we're going to chat about new beauty releases. We're going to talk about what's coming to the market, what I think about it, and if I might purchase it. And we're just going to pull up trend mood. And we're going to jump right in. So I'm going to put the picture right here. Uh, we're going to start with this newest release by e.l.f. As you can see, e.l.f. is coming hard for Charlotte Tilbury. Their last release was a dupe of the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Now we've got e.l.f. duping the wands. I've not personally tried the Charlotte Tilbury version of this product. I have one of the highlight wands in my to be tested pile. However, I haven't actually tried it yet. I am curious to try these alternatives from e.l.f. Uh, just because I like the e.l.f. Um, Hollywood Flawless Filter dupe better than the Charlotte Tilbury one. So it'll be interesting to see if they do these wands a little bit better. And also the price is going to be much cheaper than Charlotte Tilbury. If I happen to see like one of the highlights or one of the contours in store like at Ulta or Target, I will pick one up. I'm not really interested in the blushes. They're just a little bit too shimmery. Um, should they come out with a matte one, which they probably will if they're really trying to dupe Charlotte Tilbury, uh, then I would pick that one up. So I'm interested. If you've watched any of my videos or you're familiar with my website, you know that I love Merit. It's like one of my all-time favorite makeup brands. So when I saw that they were putting out a new product, I was immediately interested. It is a Merit Shade Slick Jolie Sheer Tinted Lip Oil. So this seems like it's going to be a different consistency and maybe a bit sheer version of their lip oil. And I love their lip oil. And I am so lucky that Merit has said that they're going to send me one of the shades from this new launch. I'm just waiting patiently for it to come in the mail so that I can try it. So this is a brand that doesn't catch my eye very often. And it's the MAC Connect and Color Eyeshadow Palettes. I have just not been drawn to MAC release in a minute, but there's something about these eyeshadow pal palettes. There's something about these eyeshadow palettes that are just pulling me in. It's not the outside packaging because I actually don't like that, but there's something about the way they put the colors together. They just made some really beautiful color stories. I'm particularly drawn to the large palette of nude shades. Um, however, I will not be buying this because I have a ton of nude shades and I don't need any more because yes, I <laughs> I don't need any more. Next two things we're going to talk about are kind of controversial. The first is the Kosas Dream Beam Moisturizing Mineral Sunscreen. Now Kosas and I have not been friends. Um, I've had mixed experiences with Kosas, some products I love, you know, like the setting powder, some products I don't like, like the foundation. <laughs> um, I do tend to watch what Kosas is putting out because Kosas is a very popular brand and lots of people are very interested in their releases. Um, if you look on the comments on Trend Mood, you're going to see that there are a lot of negative comments around the price of this release. And at first I felt the same way because it's $40 for an SPF 40 and it's not a ton of product. Um, but then I looked up the Summer Fridays SPF and it's $36. Um, I think Kosas probably should have priced themselves a little bit more competitively in like the $36 to $38 range. Like $40, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. And to say like, to say your product is like that much better than the Summer Fridays product to pay that much more, that's a bold claim. <laughs> that is a bold claim by Kosas. And I guess it doesn't need to be said, but I will not be buying this. This next one, there aren't a ton of details about, but I'm calling it whatever Kim Kardashian is pushing through her kid's name because there's no way that her kid is like, the brainchild of whatever is coming from the trademarks that's going around with her name. So we don't know the specifics of what they're planning, um, but I think they need to be very careful with what they're doing with this. I do think it's important to teach kids about personal hygiene, and I think it's important for kids to have products that are safe for them to use. Um, 
you know, if a kid has like really sensitive skin or, you know, products for the skin and the hair um, that are safe for children to use. That's really important. Um, if they wait a few years after getting the trademark and she's like finally into her, like her preteen years and she's starting to get acne, then I could see like maybe like a basic skincare um, routine or skincare products coming from this line. But I think if they're trying to start shilling skincare for nine years olds, that's going to be that's going to be problematic. And I think a lot of people are going to be really upset. Of course, there's also going to be those people who are going to buy this for their kids because Kim Kardashian is involved and, you know, that's enough for them. But for me, it's a pass. For me, it's a lot of ick. And yeah, anyway, we're going to move on to a release that I'm very excited for, which is the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Tinted Lip Oil. So far, I've been really impressed with all the products that I've tried from Rare Beauty. I'm like slowly collecting some so that I can do a whole face and do a brand review of Rare Beauty here on this YouTube channel. So I have to say, I've already purchased it. <laughs> I've already purchased this lip oil. I've already tried it. And spoiler alert, I already really like it. Now we're going to talk about a collab that I would normally not be interested in and it's the Lush and Super Mario Brothers collab. Um, I used to shop at Lush a lot like back when I was a bath bomb lover. Now I'm more into like the everything shower but I have two kids that will go absolutely nuts over this collection. Um, if they have any of this in store I might pick some up for my boys but I won't be picking up anything for me. We've been talking about a lot of makeup so it's time to talk about an SPF. Vacation has their Super Spritz SPF 50. I've not tried any of the Vacation SPFs. I've heard really great things about them and they're definitely on my list of SPFs that I want to try. However, I just did a huge review of Super Goop on my blog so I have more SPFs than I will probably use for the rest of the year and I don't want them to go bad so I'm not going to be purchasing any SPF right now. I don't believe I've ever talked about Makeup by Mario on my channel. A lot of the products that he puts out are for people who are just more talented at makeup than I am. Um, because he's a makeup artist and the type of looks that he does are just not something that is in my wheelhouse because I'm like a no makeup makeup girly. I saw these Moisture Glow plumping lip colors. And they look really thick and honestly a bit too shiny. So I'm going to say that's going to be a pass for me. Benefit is another brand that I don't talk about very often because I just, you know, I'm just not interested. And I know that I probably shouldn't be speaking out about brow products because I let my brows go, let them be unruly. I very rarely fill them in unless I'm wanting to look like really nice or something. Um, but I do want to talk about this release, the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Powder. To me, a brow powder just seems the opposite of goof proof. It seems harder and messier, and that's just not something that I would be interested in, um, even if I was thinking about starting to do my brows. I'm just like a pencil type of girl maybe a brow gel. Let's move on from the benefit. We have the Fenty Hella Thick Volumizing Mascara. Now I know this is going to be a very unpopular opinion, but Fenty is just not a brand that is on my radar. I Most of the releases are just meh for me. You know, I like the lip gloss is just okay. The contour is just okay. I recently bought a highlighter from them that I wish I could return. <laughs> uh, I do like the Fenty Ease Drops, um, but this volumizing mascara is not something that I'm really interested in. I do want to touch on the price point because it's going to be $19, and I really appreciate that because high-end mascara can get very, very expensive. And $19 is a very reasonable price. And I think that just makes it to where it's um, in reach to a lot of people who are interested in Fenty. 
So I do appreciate that. Next, we're going to talk about the Pat McGrath Labs release. Pat McGrath Labs makes beautiful products, lip glosses, lipsticks, eyeshadows, like just amazing products. The eyeshadow quad and the blush are just pulling me in. However, I have enough blush. I have enough blushes in my collection, and I'm not a bronzer girl, and I don't need the quad because I have three Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes that are just not getting enough use as it is already. So I will not be buying this. This last product that we're going to talk about is one of those products that I know right away just isn't for me. It is the Urban Decay 24-7 Inks Liquid Eyeliner. But I really want to talk about this because I think that this is just a really cool product. Um, and I can definitely see it being very popular. Um, graphic eyeliner has been in for the last couple of years. As long as they're doing it on that Euphoria show, people are going to want to do the graphic eyeliner. And this format just looks like it'll make it easier to do because graphic eyeliner in like really straight lines or really precise lines with a pencil product is just really difficult. And Honestly, I feel like this is Urban Decay kind of getting back to like its old school roots um, because before all the naked palettes, Urban Decay was like the punk, colorful, like a little bit different makeup brand. And yeah, I would just like to see them get back to that um, instead of like the boring stuff that they normally do. So I'm going to wrap up this Will I Buy It right here. I am going to be doing some of these a little bit more consistently. If you watched like my um, reflecting on my beauty purchases, you will know that I'm working on using my current collection more and spending less. And in fact, I am giving myself half the beauty budget that I normally do. So I like doing these types of videos because in this process, I'm helping myself by talking myself out of products that I don't really need. And I hope that this video helps you um, look at new beauty releases with a more critical eye as well so that you use your money the best way you can um, by buying products that are, you know, really going to be beneficial to you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, bye.